like if you're interested in engineering, you should definitely take an AP physics, AP physics, AP calc courses, because those are two things that you're going to run into if you're taking engineering. Hey guys, welcome to the College Lead YouTube channel. Today we have a very special guest, James Brandon Jones. So I want to make sure we get to the next part because these are questions that I have actually received from my Instagram okay. followers. For any viewers, if you have an Instagram, check out my Instagram. It's just at College Lead and I'll leave the link in the description. Yeah, so I posted it in my story. I was talking with one of my friends from Harvard. What questions would you like me to ask him? And these are a few from that that group. And I think they're honestly really great questions and very thoughtful as well. So one that I thought was particularly interesting is this. Is there a sense of elitism at Harvard? And what is the culture like? Okay, that's a good question. And that's a really good question. In my experience, overall, I did not meet a lot of people with like a sense of entitlement or elitism. Like there was definitely some there. I've met some people that were like that. Like, but there's elitism everywhere. There are people anywhere you go that think that they're too good to be like where they are. So like, I usually just don't, don't associate with those people. And mostly at Harvard, everyone's like really, really chill. Everyone's really nice. I think I also had the same worry going in both for like the orientation weekend and also just like starting school. I'm like, dang, this is crazy. I'm going to have to dress up in like slacks and button downs every day. I'm going to have to like prove myself, validate my existence every day. I'm going to have to maybe fight some people if they say something crazy. Not actually, but like, and then I got there and everyone was like really nice. Everyone's like super humble. Um, everyone's really friendly. Um, yeah. And then like, if you can like, you like find your people and like, you kind of end up like vibing with them and it ends up going out really well. Um, I only had a few instances where I would meet someone who said something elitist or had like kind of attitude or things like, oh, I'm too good for you, whatever. And all I really kind of had to do in my mind is just be like, oh, okay, I guess I'm just going to steer clear of you in the future and just go back to my friends who are all like really cool and really nice. I would say 95% of the people that I met there were super nice. Super nice, not elitist at all. Everyone felt very humbled to be there. Everyone was like just trying to work really hard um, and didn't feel like they were like better than the place when they were. So yeah, that fear kind of got destroyed in like the first few weeks, I think. Like, so after that, it was just kind of about finding the people that I relate to the most. Exactly, exactly. I, I agree with your, your answer as well. It's you can't avoid elitism. Um, I would say there's not an unusual high concentration of elitism at Harvard. It's really just a matter of who you surround yourself with. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. So next question. It kind of ties back to your admission file, but one student was asking, what made you stand out? Did you have to do something really impactful for your community? Um, like, again, I think I can only... I never know the concrete answer. I can only guess like what made me stand out. I think something unique that I did do in high school was that um, I was like gathered by a group of like parents and this one, I guess, um, interesting author that was in like the, in the community and they gathered a bunch of like the top black students within our school and in the school district. And we just wrote essays about the academic achievement gap and how it's affected us, what we think about it, um, all based on this other book. And then we put those essays together in an anthology and then we published we published that book. So I'm somewhere on Amazon talking about race relations and um, education, which is like, you know, it's just an essay. I was also in high school. I think if I were to write rewrite that chapter, it would be just a whole manifesto, but like, it's, it's different now. But I think that's something that helped me to stand out. Cause I can say, Oh, I'm a published author. And they'd be like, Oh man, you are, you wrote a whole book. I'm like, yeah, I hold a real essay. Yeah, book. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's also a thing like you, like there is definitely a way to market yourself. Like, I'm not going to lie when you're doing these applications. Um, like you, like you take a maybe achievement that you have and you find a way to still ethically like, like pump it up 
pump it up so that it like seems like really cool and really nice because like that's gonna like draw their eye to the paper and will at least like get them to ask you about it in like interviews or anything like that so I think that was one thing um I think something else that also stood out was that I was just really devoted to soccer because that's what I played in high school I played it from like elementary school all the way up to high school um in like both high school and club soccer at some points and it was like not a lot of time for extracurriculars because my extracurricular was soccer. It's like three practices a week, two, one to two games per week. And that was just taking up like, I think at least half of my, half of all my free time. So the other half was just studying. So I think that's one, that's something, um, both the sport and just like the devotion and dedication to it for such a long time might've been something that stood out, especially since they're like, we like, we like athletics, we're Harvard. We're the Ivy League. We invented sports, so we like athletics. <laughs> I'm glad I was able to bypass that with my four. <laughs> <laughs> I will never forget. I became the butt of so many jokes. It was great. Oh, no. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, I, I really love how you talked about um, keeping in mind that your application is a way and a vehicle to market yourself to college admissions offices and unfortunately or fortunately that's not going to stop even after you graduate from college because as you (laughs) alluded to you have to continue marketing yourself to potential employers and more and more as you progress in your career so the earlier you start developing that skill the better definitely with jobs I, i learned that like if you have space in your resume, you should put something like really, really unique in there that'll like catch their eyes. Like whether it's academic or not, like something that will make you like really um, memorable. And they look at it and they're like, wait, what? And then they like always want to ask you about it. For me, that's that I played Quidditch. So I bam, right there, like right in the middle of my resume. And they, they're scrolling, they're scrolling and they're like, what? Quidditch, what's Quidditch? And I'm like, oh, and I explain it. And they're like, oh yeah. Oh, that sounds really interesting. I'm like, glad you asked. Whip out my wallet, take out my Quidditch trading card, hand it to them, and boom, instant instant memory, I think. Like, people in my job now still bring that up. Like, oh, James was a Quidditch player. I'm like, ah, yeah, I was. I don't mean was, yeah. <laughs> Talk about effective marketing. I love that. Um, I think that just goes to show, don't be shy to just show who you really are and what your interests are. Not everything has to be all prim and proper, especially on a resume or even a college application. Uh, people Definitely. just want to know, I mean, not people, admission officers and they're their interviewers people. just want to know. Yeah, exactly. So they're <laughs> people and they just want to know, uh, well, I guess more specifically admission offices, but they just want to know who each candidate is actually like as a person, academically, extracurricularly, et cetera. Last question that I received from my followers is about extracurriculars. So what what extracurriculars in high school did you do to demonstrate an interest in engineering and any advice for what students interested in engineering can do? Definitely. I think I didn't do a lot of extracurriculars in engineering. I think I tried to show it in my classes because at the same time I was still exploring that like, oh, I think this is something that I want to do. So I would take classes. Um, that had to do it, whether it was like an intense class or like an AP class, or even if it was like considered a blow off class, like we had an environmental science class that was considered like a blow off class, but I was like, I need, I want to learn about this. So I went in there and I was like really serious. I was like a sophomore or a junior in a class of like all seniors who are just like, I am just trying to get this A so I can get out. But I was just like, oh, all right guys, let's analyze this soil. Let's have a good time. And they're like, shut up. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. Um, so I took like environmental science courses. I took like engineering courses, which introduced me to like design and like drawings and things like that. Took um, like AP physics. Like if you're interested in engineering, you should definitely take an AP physics, AP physics, AP calc courses. Cause those are two things that you're going to run into if you're taking engineering um, anyway. And at least it'll be like a little, a little familiar to you. At least, yeah, because like I had the option of whether to take like AP Bio or AP Physics. And at first I was like AP Bio, but then someone was like, if you want to be an engineer, you need to take AP Physics. And I was like, oh, okay. So I took AP Physics and it was a good time. It was a good time. So, but like, if you have the opportunity to like do research, um, oops, research outside 
of school. Like, I didn't even know that was a thing until I got to Harvard and like, oh yeah, I did like some time in like a lab, did research after school and whatnot. I was like, I didn't even know that that was an option. Like, I didn't even know you could do that. So I think, yeah, it's important to definitely do research to see like what things are available for you to explore that interest. Cause there, I guarantee you there's something out there that like can help you that you just don't know about yet. And if you take the time to like ask the question, ask around, maybe see what teachers know, what counselors know, what like family friends know, like, is there any way that I can like do these things? Something's going to come up that will help you and might be unique that can like maybe give you an edge in like the application process. I agree. I agree. And I will say that as students now for me, having graduated, uh, students do have a unique advantage where a lot of adults around you will more often than not be willing to say yes and help. So even if you're a high school student and just asking an adult who maybe studied engineering in college, can you tell me more about your major? What did you study? How can I as a high school student get more involved and learn? Maybe you could shadow that family friend in their job or uh, if they have a connection with a professor, you could start um, working their shadowing. So there's always going to be opportunities when you're a student. And I just don't think when I was a student, I recognized how many opportunities were available if I just asked. And it's that first step in the process. Most people will not say no to a student who's mm -hmm. just learning. Many people do love to mentor. So for any viewers, I would say certainly take advantage of that and kind of going back to what James was saying, Take the opportunity to just ask, talk to your parents, talk to your teachers, your counselors, friends, friends, parents, and, and more. And gradually you'll get to know not only more about the world around you, but opportunities that you may not have known that existed that are now available to you. Definitely. People are way more willing to help than you first assume. Like, I love mentoring. It's such a rush. I just started doing it. I'm like, oh man, I'm helping this person, but I'm also like reflecting on my past experiences. This is it. This is the ticket. This is it, folks. This is also why I love running college lead and working with students <laughs> on the college apps. Because it makes sure of like searching for your, your identity and also just what you want to do. I don't know. I thought of the college essay writing process to be a really good reflection, really good and really challenging reflection process on who I thought I was at the time, if I were to write the essays now, it'd be completely different, but yeah. who I was at the time, what mattered to me, what was my perspective, so. Definitely, it pushed me to the absolute brink, <laughs> but I think, it, I think it was a good essay. Like I said, it's challenging, it's not easy, but that concludes our uh, quick conversation here on College Lead, and thank you so much, James, for your time and also just opening up and even sharing your admission file, which I know is not easy to do out on the oh, web. But no problem. Thanks for thanks for having me. Absolutely. Anyway, thank you so much, James. And um, if any viewers are interested in seeing more content like this, leave video suggestions in the comments and subscribe for more content. Thank Sweet. you so much for watching. Later.